Welcome to the Thessaloniki Documentary Festival. Uh, the festival is happening now online. It's a digital festival with um, part of the programmation, which is now available online until Sunday. The festival will continue in April on May with some events dedicated to documentaries. And then we will have um, the main programmation of the festival in at the end of June, early July, in open air cinemas in Thessaloniki. And we are welcoming you, uh, if we can travel, of course, in Thessaloniki at the end of June. And the industry activities will also happen at the end of June in uh, Thessaloniki, both online and in a physical format. Uh, so today, we are very, very happy to initiate a series of sessions dedicated to podcasts. Uh, this is the first time that we are doing workshops. We are proposing workshops dedicated to a podcast in the Thessaloniki Film Festival, Thessaloniki Documentary Festival. And we will have three days dedicated to podcast plus um, uh, open uh, session on Thursday. Uh, the first day, we have the great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, Delphine, Delphine Saltel. So Delphine is a producer. Well, actually, she is many, many jobs at the same time. We were discussing about um, exactly how to define her uh, task, her job. And it's almost impossible to find one word uh, that would suit uh, her, um, her job. So she's at the same time a producer, she's a director, she's a documentarist, she's editing, she's, um, she's um, sound, uh, engineer at, at the same time. So, well, actually she will explain what she's doing much better than <laughs> I do. Um, so Delphine will stay with us and explain um, what she's doing for one hour. And then after that, uh, you can, uh, during the session, you can start uh, asking uh, the questions. And then at the end of the session, she will answer the, the, the questions. Tomorrow and the day after, we continue this uh, workshop with two different experts and we'll uh, dedicate the next two sessions to the uh, technique of sounds and uh, the legal uh, aspects of uh, podcast. So uh, thank you, Delphine, thank to you. Uh, open this uh, workshop session. Um, I give you the mic. Well, I don't give you the mic physically, but I give you the mic uh, digitally. And I'll be back at the end. Thank you, Eli. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I hope you, you can uh, hear me. Uh, I'm in Paris. Uh, I'm uh, at my work uh, in Arte. Uh, I'm very happy to host this uh, webinar. Um, thank you for uh, attending this workshop. Um, it's frustrating uh, not to be all together in the same room, but uh, I think it's great to share uh, questions about uh, podcast narrative and content. Um, as a self-introduction, uh, I would like to tell you briefly about how it started for me. For me, sorry. Um, I was uh, very lucky because when I broke into radio uh, in 2003, uh, so I'm doing radio documentaries for almost 20 years now. Uh, so when I broke into radio in 2003, um, at that time in France, a brand new website, uh, arteradio.com, had just been uh, launched. And it was the, the first uh, French radio on internet. And it was 20 years ago. Uh, 
Arte Radio, uh, where I still work, where, where I am now, uh, Arte Radio belongs to Arte. And as you may know, uh, I don't know, as you may know, Arte is a European uh, cultural channel. It's a, a public TV uh, run by the French and the Germans. And in 2002, uh, Arte, the TV, decided to create uh, a small radio on demand for Arte France, the French side of Arte. And if you remember this time, uh, 2002, there was nothing. There was no Facebook, no YouTube, no Netflix online. Traditional radios uh, were not accessible uh, online. And downloading was a, a world only used uh, by uh, illegal hackers. Um, and there were two people uh, on charge of uh, launching this uh, radio project, arteradio.com. Uh, two men, uh, Christophe, Christophe Rau, uh, who was a, a sound engineer. He was uh, 22 at that time. And Sylvain Gire, uh, which was uh, 38 uh, and uh, who is now uh, 57 and who is still my, my boss uh, at Arte Radio. Uh, and these two guys, uh, Christophe and Sylvain, they like uh, sound. They like sound, they like its flesh, its uh, impact and uh, its power. And both uh, were as well big fans of France Culture. And France Culture is, uh, the, is a public radio station, France Culture. And uh, it is famous in France for its big, elaborate, creative pieces, uh, radio pieces, which use sound as a language. Uh, and when Christophe and Sylvain launched arteradio.com 20 years ago, they decided to do this. They gathered, they assembled a team of young producers, um, which would uh, produce short pieces, short pieces, three, four minutes long. Uh, either uh, reports, reportage, either creations. Uh, and these uh, pieces, these, these, these reports were about what's happening in our world and uh, how, we, how we live, uh, what's happening in, in our lives. Uh, and each program uh, was a, a capsule I don't know if, uh, if you get the meaning of capsule, but it, it, it was uh, on screen. You, you, you could uh, find them uh, on the screen and, you, and, and each uh, program uh, could be enjoyed uh, by itself, like a short story uh, and uh, like a, a short audio film. Uh, with the author's name up front, uh, with a small description on the, on, on the screen. Uh, and the program was self-sufficient, which means there was no 24 hours, uh, 24 hours broadcast, no schedule, no time rendezvous. Uh, and it was with great sound quality. Uh, and so that's why we, we like to say that Arte Radio dot com pioneered podcast in France because uh, it's a uh, non-linear uh, radio it's online there's no format and you can listen to it whenever you want wherever you are uh, so Arte Radio pioneered um, podcast in France and that's why I said earlier that I was lucky to, to meet uh, this team, to meet uh, Arte Radio when I started. Um, they had, Arte Radio, they had and still have uh, complete autonomy uh, and creative uh, freedom. 
And Sylvain, uh, the boss, <laughs> Sylvain has a motto, which is beginners are a sure value. He thinks that uh, radio should be open to everybody with a good story. Uh, and that's why he hired young producers. So I say producer, but it's not the proper word. It's radio authors, I don't know, radio documentarists. But he hired uh, beginners, uh, young people. So the topics and the language was immediately modern. And I remember one of the first documentary they released, uh, it was um, maybe nine minutes long, so it was very short. And the topic was parents who smoke pot. Uh, so there, there, there was no patrimonial works um, and producers, these young producers were encouraged to write or record uh, with a, a strong personal point of view. Uh, and there was the, the best uh, digital equipment. We had, uh, and we still have uh, Nagra recorders. I don't know if you know this brand. They are very good recorders. We had, uh, and we still have uh, Sennheiser microphones, shops microphones. So the sound quality was really important. So this small structure, Arte Radio, uh, it's, a, it's a very small team, uh, was for me the perfect place to learn, to learn radio, doing radio. Uh, because when I started radio uh, in 2003, I was uh, fascinated by, uh, by radio, but I was an absolute beginner. I didn't do anything. Uh, I was 27. And uh, as you may know, uh, if you have listened to, to the, the episode uh, Lazarus sent you, um, I was a teacher. I was a, a French teacher. And uh, at that time, I had just been appointed uh, in a rough high school outside Paris in a dodgy neighborhood called Mo. And being a teacher there was uh, extremely interesting, extremely challenging, uh, exhausting too. Uh, but it was uh, for me uh, the best place uh, to start uh, doing a radio show because there were stories everywhere. There were powerful stories, real life stories uh, about students, about social inequality, about school, about educational disadvantage, about immigration, topics which made headline news and that was great because I had access to this reality every day. I had to go there every day. Uh, and much better, I was part of this reality because I was a teacher. Um, and uh, I was not a journalist. I was a, a character of the story I wanted to tell. Uh, and this situation, being part of the story, being part, being a character of, uh, of, of the story, um, uh, had huge consequences on my work, on the way I've been doing things. Um, and that's the, maybe the, the first part of, the, of this talk. Um, it's uh, something uh, which is very important in, uh, in my work. It's a, uh, I call this part uh, fly on the wall recordings. Uh, I hope you, you catch the meaning fly on the wall recording and soundscapes, uh, which is very uh, important uh, in radio uh, and in my work. And I suggest that um, to introduce this, this part, this topic uh, about soundscapes and uh, fly on the wall recording, uh, I suggest that we listen to a short piece I made uh, in 
2005. It's called Rimbaud. Uh, Rimbaud, like uh, Arthur Rimbaud. I don't know if you know him. He's a very, very famous uh, poet in France, maybe the, the most famous poet in France with Victor Hugo. Um, and if you grow up in France, uh, if you go to school in France, you can't avoid uh, learning uh, poems uh, of Rimbaud. Uh, so this is a, a two minutes uh, long piece. Um, so I am going to switch on the, the video. I hope I will manage. It's not this one. It's, okay, that's that's this one. Le dormeur du Val, cette intro de verdure au chant d'une rivière accroche en follement des herbes, non, herbes aux ayons d'argent où le soleil de la montagne fière, lui, c'est un petit Val qui mousse de rayons, un soldat jeune, bouche ouverte, tête nue, il dort, et la nuque baignant, et la nuque baignant dans le, la frais de sa cresson bleu, <rire> cresson bleu, euh, il dort étendu dans, dans l'herbe sous nu. <rire> Non, bougez pas, on termine. Ça nuit. Attends, attends. attends. Oui. Vous laissez juste 30 secondes qui termine après la sonnerie. Affida, souffle. Sous la nu. Euh... Sous la nu. Après, c'est quoi Je sais plus. Moi-même, moi -même, je sais plus. Pâle dans son hiver. Pâle dans son hiver où la lumière pleut. Euh... Parfum. Les pieds dans les glaïeuls. Je sais plus, je sais plus. Bon, allez, on se revoit vendredi. Vous pouvez ranger vos affaires. Bon, bonjour. Attends, ça va Voilà, je suis bon. tout rattrapé. La réputation Ouais. Madame, je vais vous rattraper. Allez. Tout à 16. Ah, je connais pas. 16. Oh. Au revoir. Arte. Ferme la porte, Sabrina. Radio. Point. Comme. Thank you very much, Lazarus, to save uh, and to fix the situation. Um, so I don't know how it sounds uh, for non-French speaking people. Um, Uh, I hope uh, you, 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 you will get um, what I, I, I'd like to say. It's a very simple uh, piece. It's, it, it's very, it's bare, it's uh, raw. Uh, but I thought that it would give you a specific example about how uh, Arte Radio and my work and radio in general is focused on soundscapes. Working for Arte Radio, I have realized that I could trust soundscapes, I could trust sound to tell stories on its own without any comment. Uh, it might seem uh, obvious, um, but it was very important for me to understand that. Uh, and as I was a teacher, it was uh, easy for me to, to record many, many situations, everyday life situation in the classroom, in the, in the corridor, in the outside. Um, and it was much easier than if I would have been a journalist covering a, a story. Uh, I used to switch on my recorder on every occasion. I let the recorder on as often as possible. And that's how I get these fly on the wall recordings. 
everyday situations, moments that you would not catch if you were there just for um, recording a, an interview. And the, the school was a great, uh, a great uh, play field for this because there were scenes and, and things happening all the time and it was so lively, so dramatic. So it, it, it was, it was uh, really great to experience this uh, soundscape uh, recording. And uh, what was great also, uh, I did not have to, I did not have to, to ask for uh, authorizations. I did not need to ask uh, uh, to record because uh, my microphones and my recorder, they became usual. They became um, part of the, of the classroom, of the, of the landscape. Uh, and the students get used to it very easily. Uh, so, so that was great. And uh, these many, many situations I, I, I could record every day uh, were my raw material. Um, so it was uh, sounds and voices. And I'm very uh, sensitive, I'm very into voices when they are not talking directly to the microphone, but voices which are talking um, and interacting with uh, other voices. Um, and the microphone is just there to, to, to catch it, to catch the, the lively interactions. Um, because for me, it's, it's, it's very powerful. It's, it's, it's as powerful, I mean, maybe it's more powerful than uh, someone sitting uh, on his chair and uh, talking to the, to the microphone for an interview, a static interview. And what I like with these uh, fly on the wall recordings is that they are full of meaning. They are, they, are, they, they, they are thick, they are full of meaning. I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, for, for instance, uh, I don't know what you've understood uh, about the, the poem, but uh, for me, this student, his name is Abdel Kader, this student reciting uh, the poem uh, in the classroom with all the other students, for me, it, it's a good situation. It's a good radio situation, a, a good radio scene, because you don't have to describe it. You don't have to analyze it. You 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 just have to listen to it and you know where you are you know who is who uh, you can imagine you can guess uh, you have pictures in your mind and you can think uh, about uh, who is this student uh, what are his difficulties uh, and it raises questions in your mind it brings back memories and it's much stronger for me because the listeners are free to think whatever they want. And for me, that's the most important thing with the, this soundscape uh, and this, this, this fly on the wall recordings. Is they, it's very important to let the listeners uh, think something on their own, with their own background, with their own feelings, with their own experience, with their own political ideas. Uh, and for example, uh, with Abdel Kader, uh, in this very short piece, uh, you can uh, relate to this young uh, boy, you can, uh, you can uh, feel upset, you can, uh, you can criticize the teacher, uh, me, uh, this teacher who gives uh, so classical poems to memorize, who uses a, a very traditional uh, pedagogy, uh, classroom pedagogy, which I don't know, uh, which might, uh, I mean, which may maybe um, fail uh, or uh, struggle uh, the, the student. 
it's it's uh, there's no obvious message uh, there's no uh, obvious meaning it's it's full of meaning but uh, the listener and that's my point the listener has some space to make up his own mind uh, and that's why i really love podcasts with uh, situations with these soundscapes um, and very often in nowadays podcast, there's a, a lack of sounds of real life. There are only voices in a studio telling uh, good stories, efficient stories, but there is no sound. Uh, and I think it's a pity uh, because a uh, podcast is radio and radio, uh, it's about recording life as it is. Um, so I don't know if it's uh, an issue which uh, interest, uh, which is interesting for you, but uh, it, it, for me it's very uh, it, it's very important. Of course, there are many many other reasons to use soundscapes in a radio documentary, in radio features. For example, uh, it helps to to rise pictures uh, in 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 the mind. It helps to imagine the places, the atmosphere, the people. Um, so it makes things alive. Um, it's also useful uh, for rhythm when you listen to a documentary and just after an interview, uh, if there is a soundscape, it gives you a break. You, you have a few seconds uh, free. I mean, uh, you just listen to sounds and voices and your mind is free to process, to metabolize uh, what you've just heard. And you have time to think about it. You have time to agree or to disagree. You have time to be touched, uh, to imagine, but no one uh, is saying uh, what you are supposed to think. Uh, and that's the, that's the beauty of, uh, of soundscapes and, uh, and situations. Uh, it's about meaning. It's about um, meaning which is beyond words, beyond whatever you could say. Uh, and that's how you can give depth and complexity uh, to, to features uh, because it expands the meaning so that there is no final conclusion. It's, it, re it remains open because... Uh, the, the, the meaning is, is too thick. Um, that's my point. I, I hope it's clear. Um, the, other, uh, the other topic I wanted to, to, to address um, is another um, thing I, I still do uh, today in my work. Uh, it's uh, speaking in the first person. Uh, so that's my the second part of uh, of my talk. Um, it's about saying I, dire je, uh, using a, a first person narrative, uh, and that's also how I started. Um, I suggest that um, we we listen to a, another piece, another short piece. Uh, it's another episode of my series. Uh, my series, sorry. Que sont-ils devenus? Uh, what are they now? Uh, it's a series where I go back to the city where I used to, 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 to teach, to be a teacher. And I record my students uh, 12 years after having left. Uh, I think that you've been sent uh, an episode of this series about uh, one of my students, Ange. Uh, I don't know if you have the time to listen to it, uh, but here is a, a trailer of uh, another episode of this series. Uh, it's about Abdel Kader, the one we, uh, we've uh, just heard, uh, the one who was reciting the poem uh, 12 years later. Um, and uh, as I told you earlier, um, when I started radio, uh, I, 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 I was a teacher, I was not a journalist, and um, 
I was a, a teacher trying to tell stories about her work, about her student and the city where she, I was working. Um, and that's why I decided, uh, for, it was my very first time in radio, uh, I decided to shape my podcast into a kind of diary, uh, of uh, personal diary. Uh, but uh, I'm, I, we, we are going to listen to the, to the, the trailer. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to do it on my own this time. I hope it will be okay. Uh, so it's uh, very short. It's uh, one one minute uh, long, but you can uh, have an idea of the project. Uh, what I am supposed to do? I think it's okay. I just have to click on play. Celui que je vais voir en premier, c'est Abdelkader. Oui, Kader, c'est Delphi... Madame Saltay. D'accord, merci. Abdelkader, je l'ai eu en classe de quatrième. C'est un peu avec lui que j'ai compris que la ZEP, ça ne serait pas le cercle des poètes disparus. Abdelkader, avance-toi. Cette intro de verdure au chant une rivière accroche en follement. Là, miracle, on l'entend réciter par cœur deux strophes d'Arthur Rimbaud. Mais en général, il était plutôt au fond de la classe à foutre le bordel. Au fond, je crois que c'est pour ça que je l'enregistrais. Pour dire, je fais quoi, moi, avec des gamins comme ça ah. Oh là là, t'as changé Bah ouais Ça va Ça va, il dit. Il m'ouvre la porte en survêtement et claquette de piscine. Ça fait longtemps Un petit café Tout sourire. Il a une dent cassée et une autre en or, le crâne rasé, à suivre, et des cicatrices sur le visage. Sur arteradio.com So that's a, a short trailer of, um, it's not the diary, uh, it's uh, 12 years later, uh, uh, when I go back to Mo uh, and uh, I catch up with uh, Abdelkader. Um, and uh, it's uh, just a, an example on which uh, I wanted to lean to tell you about this first uh, person uh, narrative, telling the story in the first person. Um, What, uh, what I did when I started uh, this radio documentary uh, in 2002, um, I, I, every month uh, I would record myself uh, on my bed or at my desk, talking to the microphone and uh, telling the story about my everyday life at work with my students. Um, so there was no analyze, no theory, no dissertation. Uh, it was just telling what happened every day uh, because that was the only thing I felt uh, legit to do. Uh, and this first person narrative was a very, very interesting uh, format to explore because that's how I understood because once again, it was 20 years ago, that's how I understood that a podcast is a, an intimate piece uh, of radio. It addresses, it addresses a person, uh, not an audience. It's, it's someone uh, talking to someone else. Um, it's uh, friendly, it's uh, rhythmical, it's complicit. Um, And I, I'm confident uh, that podcast is mainly about this address. Um, it's like uh, having people over for dinner. You open the door and uh, you, you welcome the guests. Um, and you, it's, it's all about you. It's about your, your spirit, your tone, your engagement, the way you cook. Uh, and it's not like being uh, an expert or a journalist. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's very different. It was very different for me. Um, 
because I could share my questions. I could uh, open up uh, about my doubts, my dilemmas, my worries. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the way I try to do uh, things in my podcast. I think that it's relevant uh, to say I, to tell your story in the first person, if you feel ready to share your, your questions, your doubts, your difficulties. Uh, if you are here uh, to show only the best part of your self, um, of your life, uh, like in a display window, trying to, to sell uh, your, 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 the good side of your, of your life, uh, as we all do on Facebook or uh, on Instagram, uh, it's useless. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's useless. Uh, because how do we feel when we, when we spend the time watching, um, watching at uh, Instagram uh, pictures of uh, our friends, how do we feel? We, we, feel, uh, we feel bad, we feel, uh, we feel lonely, we feel uh, depressed, we feel jealous. Um, and when you listen to a good podcast with someone uh, trying to be as honest as possible, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to feel bad, you're supposed to uh, that's what happened. Uh, what, what, that's what's happening uh, when the when the podcast is good uh, for me. It's uh, when you when you feel better after having uh, listened to it. When you, when you feel uh, when you feel uh, like you're not uh, alone anymore. When you feel um, grateful for the 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 content, um, uh, and that's why you have to 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 to, to to be ready to reveal your dark side. I don't know how to say that in English, but your failures, your weakness, your, your questions. Um, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do in my radio work. Uh, I don't say that I, that I uh, succeed every, every time, but um, th that's, that, that, that's something that I still do today. Uh, even if I became a journalist, uh, and I am a journalist now, and uh, I cover stories uh, uh, where I'm not a character anymore, I mean, uh, but uh, uh, I still use, I still start from uh, my everyday life, my, uh, uh, for instance, I've been hosting a, a monthly podcast for, for a few months now on arteradio.com. Vivons heureux avant la fin du monde. Uh, don't know how to translate it in English, but it's uh, vivons heureux avant la fin du monde. Uh, let's 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 stay happy um, uh, before the the end of the world. And 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 uh, I in this podcast I uh, I interview scholars or uh, activists. Uh, it's about crisis, global warming, and uh, climate change. Uh, but the narrative uh, starts uh, from my everyday life and my contradictions and my questions and my guilt, my guiltiness, my guilt, my feeling of guilt. Um, I've been too long. Uh, I've just uh, received a, a text from Iphigenia, uh, which says that we should move to question now. Um, so I am going to click on a doc when where there are your your questions. It's really weird to be on all alone in front of my screen without seeing you, without hearing you. Um, it's a lonely, lonely experience. How can we make more? Sorry, let me read the questions. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> I was too stressed to read the, the short messages messages you sent, uh, but it's good to, to read them now. How can we make more appealing content for in terms of narrative technique? Do you write the narrative text before making the recordings or after? So uh, maybe uh, 
the, the first question, the first question, how can we make more appealing content uh, in terms of narrative techniques? Um, it's a it's a huge question. I don't have any technique, uh, to be honest, but um, maybe the other question, do you write the narrated text before making the recordings or after? Um, I don't uh, really have uh, any, uh, sorry, I lost my screen. I, I, I don't have any technique, I mean, uh, regular technique. I do both. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do the recordings and uh, and I think about what I could say, what I could tell. And I do all together. Uh, and the more uh, I, sorry, I struggle to find my words. I really, so, it's tough to explain uh, the the technique, but uh, I, I, it's 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 very uh, artisanal. Uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, like uh, handcrafting, um, and until the end, I rewrite uh, a short sentence uh, just to be sure that the the link the. the between what we've just heard and what I am going to say just after. So it, it's really like sewing, 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 I don't know, um, coudre, la couture, uh, uh, knitting. Uh, and it's, it's really, it takes uh, too much time, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, artisanal. Um, that's how I could... Uh, reply uh, and the other question I like the question about, is there a difference between podcast and radio documentary or is it just synonyms? It's a big issue. There are people who are arguing about a podcast and radio documentary. I, I don't know how to say about that. I think podcast uh, is, there's a trend um, and there are many podcasts who use the same techniques. Um, uh, but on arteradio.com, for instance, there's there's no really there, there's there's no big difference. We 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 say documentary, but you can as long as there's no format, as long as it is uh, independent uh, from uh, a, a, a daily broadcast in a, a program with a time rendezvous. I think you can say that it's podcast. I, I mean, uh, podcast is it's for me. Uh, podcast it, it's when you you can reinvent your own format uh, on each project. You have a story. You have people um, you, you you want to interview. You have a topic. You have a story, and you can reinvent um, the way you you are going to tell your story because there's no program. There's no official program. You you each each podcast might be self sufficient and and ha have its own uh, rules and its own. Uh, Tone and that's why it's so exciting because you you can you can do whatever you 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 want. Um, let's go back to the. So I, I can't reply to the. But for me, podcast is radio. That's uh, that's for sure for me. Um, What do you mean by radio should record life as it is? How can we claim that something is life? <laughs> wow, that's deep. Could you tell us how you record life as it is, the technique? That's what, 
this question, that's what I tried to explain, but maybe I wasn't very clear. Uh, trying to catch life as it is, I'm aware that it's, I mean, it's a dream. It's uh, something, I mean, as, as soon as there's a microphone, life is not as it is uh, exactly. I mean, the microphone does something to the, to the interaction. So I'm aware of that, but uh, my technique to catch something which is lively, which is true, which is which sounds true. Um, it's uh, let the recorder on uh, during long uh, period and waiting for life to happen and and you and you record and if you if you wait uh, long enough very often something happens and 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 it's recorded and and it sounds uh life as it is uh, so that's how i i i try to 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 do this uh, so recording uh i don't know recording uh, for instance uh, a wall class a whole session a whole class session uh, if, if you if you if you record only five minutes you just have a, you will have a short uh, illustration that you have to wait you have to 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 to, to wait uh, and you have to look for uh, situations which are dramatic situation which uh, which are easy to identify uh, a teacher talking to his students, but uh, a doctor uh, with uh, his patient, or you, you see like uh, like on a um, dramatic situation, I hope uh, you, you, you get it, um, like a um, theater. Uh, but th there are many, many ways to, to, to do it. That's, that's the way I do. Uh, I'm sure there are many other techniques. Um, is there a risk of be becoming too personal, like making a narrative that's too much about yourself? Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, of course, there's a there's a big risk, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's also uh, why I replied earlier that until the end uh, I, I rewrite because there, there's a balance uh to find you have to find the balance between your narrative starting from uh, your point of view your your everyday life um, situation um it, it's good to start because listeners can relate to you but it's not the the main part of the of, of the episode of the program so it, it's only a starting point it's only a, it's only a way to to, 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 to build the, the narrative, but it's not the most important, just a part of the, the story. And you, you, you look for the, 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 the good balance uh, and it takes time to, it takes time to, to feel the good balance. Um, but I, I'm aware that people, I mean, there, there, there are, arguments about uh, is it okay to to use this first person narrative uh, uh, it's it's uh, I, I don't know uh, in Greece but in France there are there are um, arguments about do podcast hosts use too much this this technique of uh, first person uh, narrative and it's true that uh, it's it's a trend. It's a it's a it's a trend uh, nowadays. And sometimes, sometimes when you feel that it's only um, a trick, uh, that it's not sincere, that it's uh, just a trick, uh, you might feel uncomfortable. Uh, I think. As long as you try to stay honest and and to to share something uh, sincere about you, I think it's okay. Uh, but it's easy to say. <laughs> um, do you have an archive of recordings of life as it is? The soundtrack. 
maybe people are laughing at me because I said life as it is. It's Have you ever done a podcast without interviews, just with your voice narration and sound? Uh, no, uh, not really. Maybe one or two, but uh, the point is, it's being part of the story, but not the the main part. Not 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 being uh, on the first. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's just a, using yourself to be the starting point and, and, and using your, your relationship to things um, just, to, just to be clear about the fact that you tell the story from your, from your point of view and, 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 and it's a way to, to be honest with it. Uh, you, I, I don't feel like an expert. I'm expert of, uh, I'm not an expert of anything. I just, uh, I just uh, try to tell the story uh, uh, with my personality. Uh, so, but uh, it's not about me. It's about people I, I meet, people. Uh, uh, but uh, if you erase yourself completely, I mean. Uh, it's okay. There are many beautiful features uh, with uh, you, you, where you can't uh, he hear uh, the, 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 the voice of the journalist or of the documentarist. Uh, it's, it's very beautiful and, and I'm, uh, I admire uh, this kind of works, but my way uh, of doing things is uh, using uh, starting uh, uh, from me. Uh, but it might be humble uh, because uh, as I tried to say it earlier, it's, it's humble if you are here to, to share uh, your questioning, um, not to explain life to people uh, with your self-confidence. Uh, uh, and that's why I said that for me, um, podcast is an intimate piece. Uh, and the main part of a podcast is the address because you 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 address to to to, to the others, but like a, like a, you you could be anyone else. I, I, I really struggle to find my words in English, but um, I hope some of you <laughs> will will uh, understand. Um, Do you follow a script of this? Um, do you have an, I, I, I don't understand the, do you have an archive of recordings of life as it is the soundtrack? Uh, but uh, do you follow a script or is it an intuitive process? Uh, I think it's it's much uh, uh, it's rather intuitive. Um, I really do uh, how I am going to explain this in English. <clears throat> uh, I I record people, uh, I, I work on my topic, I read the books, I phone, uh, I, I, I give phone calls to, to people's, uh, people I, I would like to interview, like every, like every journalist. Um, I, I do the recordings, I do the interview, and you know, it's very uh, a work in, in progress. You, you 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 struggle with an interview you are disappointed so you find you you look for uh, some ways to 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 fill in the gaps or to to uh, it's it's really a process it's it's really uh, I don't have any pre preconceived uh, idea of um, 
of what I am going to say. It, it, it's it's uh, the recording which rises, uh, which rise uh, the ideas which uh, inspire me. I'm not very clear, I'm sorry about it. Um, Uh, the listener's profile, demographics, maybe it could be interesting to, to, to reply to this question. Um, I don't know uh, in foreign countries, but in France, podcasts uh, are um, listened by uh, younger, young, young listeners. And uh, Arte Radio, that's great working for Arte Radio because when you, sometimes we do... Um, we do um, this écoute, we, 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 we do a show, we, we uh, invite uh, the audience to come uh, to a theater and we air the, some documentaries uh, and we listen to the documentaries uh, all together. We, we call that goûter d'écoute. So it's like a show, but we, we just uh, sit in the dark. Uh, people sit in the dark and, and, and we listen all together. And it's really a, a great uh, experience. So we, we do this, uh, Arte Radio, we do this uh, every month. And it's really great because um, first you can see uh, listeners uh, and uh, the, the listeners we, who come to these events uh, they, they, they are young. <laughs> so that's great because I also work for France Culture, which is the, 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 the famous uh, public radio in France. And uh, France Culture really struggles to uh, reach uh, a young audience because it's a patrimonial uh, programs, it's cultural programs. So there's no young listeners, but Arte Radio, uh, it works for, for young people. <laughs> so we are happy with it. Um, could you give us some advice about how we make a structure for a successful, successful podcast? No, I, I, I can't give you some advice because as you may notice, uh, as you, you have noticed, I'm, I'm not very good at uh, uh, explaining and finding my words in English, but I really recommend you uh, a, a great podcast about podcast. Uh, it's on. Uh, I, I, I can send you the 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 link. It's on. Uh, it's called uh, Podcast Academy. It's run by um, Gimlet uh, Media. So I don't know if you know Gimlet, but it's it's a it's a platform uh, with a great great uh, American uh, podcast. They are they are big. They are they are great. Um, and there's a, a, a really good podcast about podcast. And the first episode is about how you pitch an episode. So uh, the title is. Uh, good pitches make good episodes. And the guy uh, explains how uh, you can uh, uh, pitch uh, your project. There's another episode about uh, starting an episode, how you, how you make your, your beginning uh, efficient, how you start a, a story. And, and, and they are really good at uh, techniques. They, they, they're much better than me. They, they give you uh, ad some advice and some techniques and some tricks to, uh, to build, to, to, to build and, and to, to edit. Uh, and they, are, they are really good. And I think there are six or yes, six episodes. You, you should, if, if you are interested in techniques, in uh, how doing this, how uh, you, you, you definitely uh, should listen to, to this uh, podcast academy. It's on Gimlet, J G I M L E T, Media, Gimlet Media, and there are many other podcasts. 
I hope it will help you. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Delphine? Oui. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you have uh, answered most of the questions, I think. Yes. And, um, and uh, maybe uh, it would be time to uh, close this first uh, session yes. uh, about the art of podcast and the introduction to the art of podcast and the philosophy post of podcast so thank you i mean we had so many questions and uh, some of them were very uh, specific some of them were more uh, philosophical <laughs> um, we are going to continue tomorrow with the uh, technical uh, sound aspects and the legal aspects also uh with the, the next two uh, sessions so but Thank you very much for uh, attending this uh, session. And I think that we, you ca we can easily find your podcast on the website of uh, France Culture and the website of Arte Radio, uh, which are uh, absolutely um, genial. And uh, you can uh, spend hours and days, I mean, just like, many many uh, good podcasts and uh, the american podcast and the bbc podcast and the whole world of podcasts so uh, <laughs> so thank you very much delphine yes. for staying with us thank you very much uh, thank you have a, a nice festival bye bye thanks <laughs>